You're looking at Firefly Aerospace's Mission Operations Center here in Austin, Cedar Park, Texas, just north of Austin, where the team has been operating Blue Ghost Mission 1 for the last 45 days since launching from Kennedy Space Center. Welcome to the live landing coverage of Firefly's first road trip to the moon with our Blue Ghost lunar lander delivering NASA payloads. Just over an hour from now, we will attempt to land in Mare Crisium, a basin in the northeast quadrant of the moon's near side, or the side we see here on Earth. A little south of Mare Crisium, you will find Mare Tranquillitatis, or Sea of Tranquility. That location might sound familiar since that's where the first Apollo astronauts landed on Apollo 11 in July 1969. Blue Ghost launched on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket in the early morning hours on January 15th from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. About six minutes after the launch, Blue Ghost separated from Falcon to begin orbiting Earth before it went into lunar orbit. The lunar lander acquired signal about nine minutes later, which was followed by completion of on-orbit commissioning. That moment officially kicked off that 45-day journey that's brought us here to today. Now, what you may not know is that Launch Complex 39A is where the historic Apollo missions headed to the moon. That must have felt symbolic. Absolutely. And it was a proud moment and a huge shout out to SpaceX for being such an incredible launch partner. Blue Ghost was deployed into a highly elliptical Earth orbit about an hour after liftoff. We then completed a 45-day transit from Earth to the moon. And this mission has been incredibly successful to date. And we're so proud of what our Fireflies and NASA have collectively accomplished. So far, we've already downlinked 27.2 gigabytes of data, including some incredible payload science from NASA. We conducted seven engine burns during that transit for a total of 523 seconds and traveled roughly 2.8 million miles. Wow. This included 25 days in Earth orbit where Blue Ghost took a phased orbital approach with three and a half elliptical orbits around Earth that got us closer to the moon each time. Then we performed what's called a translunar injection to escape Earth's gravitational pull and completed a four-day transit to the moon. A lunar orbit insertion burn was then performed to enter the moon's orbit where Blue Ghost spent the last 16 days. Additional maneuvers were performed during this time to enter a low lunar orbit. This brought us to about 100 kilometers above the moon. That's where the lander is right now as we get ready for our descent orbit insertion. No pressure, 100 kilometers. And during Blue Ghost's road trip to the moon, Firefly was able to download, downlink some pretty incredible imagery. Let's take a look back at that footage. So without a doubt, no matter how many times I see these, I am proud, inspired, and frankly speaking, just blown away at how stunning our Earth and moon look in the darkness of space. Now, when you're headed to the moon, that trip can vary depending on the selected route. Some might be a lot quicker than others, but Firefly chose that scenic route. We did, and there are a lot of benefits to that scenic route, actually. With that 45-day transit, we were able to conduct rigorous health checks on each Blue Go subsystem and on each of those NASA payloads. This route also gave us ample time to calibrate our propulsion system ahead of each of those critical maneuvers. We could then analyze the data from each burn so we could better predict performance and optimize our trajectory. Once we entered lunar orbit, we also had more time to calibrate our vision navigation system and verify its operations, which enable that precision landing. And most importantly, we were able to conduct payload science operations throughout that road trip and capture some incredible data for our NASA customers. NASA selected the landing site based on the data requirements for the agency's science and exploration goals. Mare Crisium was selected for this mission because it has a large impact basin. There's a lot of good data that can be collected here about the basin's chronology and the different volcanic features. It may also help us understand the volcanic history on the moon, including how it formed and evolved. This particular area was chosen in part to avoid magnetic anomalies on the lunar surface that could interfere with some of the observations we needed to take of the Earth's magnetosphere. In the next 15 minutes, we're going to tune into our Mission Operations Center as the team monitors the vehicle and prepares for that final descent. 
Now there are some of those visuals that you were describing earlier in the show, Bridget. So we can see our countdown clock where we're about 14 minutes, just uh, almost under 14 minutes from landing. And we have that visualization of uh, Blue Ghost as it's continuing its horizontal trajectory, getting ready to get into that vertical mode. Exactly. And so, like we said before, that's real telemetry that's driving that simulation y'all are seeing on your screen here. That yellow vector you see off to the left, that's pointing in the direction of the sun. And that blue vector there is a direction of the Earth. So the lander is performing that nine minute power descent initiation using all of its engines to reduce. And you can see that on the simulation right there with An the engine going. Main engine is on. We see that. Descent critical. Call All consoles flight and ops and abort is no longer possible. All right, Mission. from here on out, it is just going to be those 400 Spectra engines. 400 meters. Now, just as a reminder, those uh, Spectra engines that we see firing right now on our, on our uh, GNC screen. GNC and VNS flight and ops, certify 49.2 and ready. They are doing those pulses. VNS is in relative. 260 meters up. First redirect occurred, 98 meters from original target. Arsenal. One minute remaining in flight. So. The vehicle has converged on its commanded descent profile. All right, so we are in that autonomous exactly. phase that you had described to us. She is ready and has been preparing for this. You're going to he hear a lot of call-outs here about vision navigation solutions, laser Seconds range finder. remaining in terminal. 100 meters up. And let's Health just... Systems. Navigation filter is still healthy. Second hazard avoidance occurred, 5 meters from previous target. 50 meters up. 30 seconds remaining in flight. Payload verified 49.4. Copy. Verified. 11 meters up. Contact. shut down. Three contact sensors tripped. Engine shut down confirmed. Power's nominal vehicle is charging. IME reports lunar gravity and it is stable. Alcon, chief engineer on ops. Y'all select the landing. We're on the moon. just became the first commercial company in history to complete a fully successful moon landing. Congratulations to the entire team. This is such an incredible feat for Firefly, NASA, our nation, and the world as we pave the way for a lasting lunar presence. Congratulations, Bridget. And to our Firefly and NASA teams, what a nail-biting moment in history. The joint teams are now celebrating or enjoying this much-deserved celebration at our landing event here in North Austin, Texas. Now we do have something exciting that we we've do. all been waiting for. Do you want to tease the audience a little bit more or what well, do you we think? We have that, that lunar image ready. So Do we? let's go ahead and share that with the with the team here. All right, you're seeing it here first. Look at that view. I'm feeling a little bit emotional and I'm feeling over the moon. Now when I look up at the moon from down here, I will always remember this exact moment and the fact that Blue Ghost Mission 1 is in the northeast region in Mare Crisium. What an incredible sight. 